What's up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Life of a Job in Plumber. We have a varied variety of jobs as usual in today. Um, I think there's three. Yeah, a grand total of three. <laughs> We've plenty of tips and tricks and um, stuff for apprentices and newbies and DIYers in there as well. Hope you enjoy this episode. Don't forget to click that like button. Do it now before you forget. Drop a comment down below and I'll try and reply back to every single one of you. Except if you're a douchebag and we just don't bother with them. We don't bother. There's no point. If you don't like it, just don't watch. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. So this is a bit of an interesting one we're gonna have to diagnose. The boiler temperature, as you can see, is in a disco mode. <laughs> That's looking like it's gonna be the the boiler for Mister, not the hot water for Mister, obviously, which is a dry pocket, thankfully. But we'll give it a test. So inside the combustion box, it's this one here. The best thing to get that off is a box spanner off a tap. Just slide it in, plenty of leverage down the center. You're not messing around trying to get into it. And like I said, that's dry pocket. That one down there with the green lead on, which normally causes all this it's been repaired that well it says it's got ptfe on it rusting the chamber rusts the box of the boiler the chassis um that's the hot water for mister and that is wet pocket so you'd have to drain isolate the uh cold water to the boiler and empty it out before changing that one like i said this one's dry pocket so you'd have to you'd have to drain any water out So we're going to put our multimeter onto the ohm setting and it's quite difficult to do this without you can you can get extra off an old boiler you can cut off the old ones and, and make it you know the old leads and strip them back and it's easier to test but we're going to test the uh, ohms resistance of these two which i don't know if you can see that but we're on ol at the minute 12 12,000 ohms. And I've got this little paperwork for the vaccines. So 12,000 ohms would symbolize 20 degrees, which hmm, I bet that's there or thereabouts. So this could be looking like it's gonna be the board at fault. However, I do have a different one. I used one off a Duotech I've took out in the past and I know this was working. So I'm just gonna fill that void there with heat sink compound. It gives a bit of a, a more accurate reading for the boiler. Hmm. Well, although the ohms were showing correct, that replacement for Mr. Has, uh, seems to rectify the problem, but I've got my 26.9 checks to do now, so I'll see what it's like after I've had it up to temperature and things. It does seem to be playing ball now with that new for Mr. No idea why it was showing the correct readings, unless it was actually <coughs> a warmer temperature than I, uh, I put down at 20 degrees. Yeah, me diagnosing the board. Lucky I didn't go and get one in it, and lucky I had a second thermos uh, for Mister on the van. That confused me. Did that? That's this morning's job. We've got a TRV, which the pin is stuck. Although it does move in and out, I managed to get it working freely. It doesn't. I don't know, it doesn't open all the way. It's only allowing a small bit of heat into this radiator. The only problem with this system is. So an old Baxi Solo Mark II, heat only, <sighs> gravity fed. So I'm gonna have to bung the tanks. <sighs> and probably have to solder an end feed 15 mil reducer on that. Cause I've only got 15 mil valve. That is a 15 mil valve, but I don't want to risk using the old reducer. Thankfully I've got a drain up though. That's always a good start. 
So let's get the ladders out and get in the attic with our pipe bungs. So these two of the pipe bungs are using what we're going to bung. There's the feed pipe that fills the heat in and the vent pipe off the top of the tank. So we're looking for the little tiny F&E tank, the expansion tank in the attic. And there'll be a pipe on the bottom, which is going to be this one here, which is your feed. So we'll put a bung in the connection inside the tank and a vent pipe, which is this top one. I'll put a bung in that. I'll try and get a video of it, but obviously you can see where it is. It's not ideal. Right. So that's the bung in the vent. You just have to believe me, unless you can see it from there. <laughs> There's a bung in the feed as well. The water's always scuzzy in these tanks. Right, now then, with a bit of luck, that will be it emptied. So I'm going to shut off this side. So that's shut off now. Just count how many turns it takes you to shut off. So when you reopen it later on, um, you have no issues with the balancing side of things. That's that draining off. Obviously that side's still open. So that's the side we want to be draining. As you can see, it's not draining very fast. That's probably the flow through that valve. That's all it's got. I'm doing whether it's a lifted up. Give that a few minutes and hopefully it'll stop. And what we won't want to, we don't want to happen, is to you start hearing the tank filling back up upstairs, which means your vacuum you've tried to cause by bunging the F and E tank has failed. So I always get comments on these. What is this yellow spanner used for holding rad valves? It is a rad wrench. It's from Monument, and with it being plastic, it doesn't damage the chrome. And whilst I'm recording this, I can hear. The F&E tank filling, so I'm going to have to go and check them bungs are uh, properly in. <clears throat> it's still emptying. Enough so I could swap the valve, but not enough so I could solder a fitting onto it. So I might have to rethink my plan with this. So I've closed that drain off now. So obviously this is our open end. Let's see if we can undo this. So that's us off now. Yeah, it's barely even open. No wonder it wasn't circulating properly. I've just taxed that off because it's I need as much length as possible on this pipe. As you can see, there's still a constant drip, so I don't know how I'm going about going to go about soldering it up. Hmm, might wet back it out and see, clean it off. Get a reducer at the ready and just be quick. Right, so you'll have to excuse one, my soldering, and two, not getting the footage of that. Because of what I did, <laughs> I cleaned it up. I looked at it and thought, what wonder happened? I blow it back. So I blew the pipe back and it gave me just enough time to sweat a fitting on. <sighs> the beauty about using these long 10 to 15 mil reducers is as you can see, it is too long now that, but because it's a 15 mil pipe, you can cut it to length. So that just wants, I don't know, about eight mil off it. Not changing the tail in this, but I'll change the nut and olive. And to do that, you just get your adjustable. Oh, like that. So paste both nuts and olives up. Now we're ready for banging our new valve on. Right, new valve on, just needs cleaning up. Obviously that side's shut off, that side's shut off now. So we're going to remove our bungs out of the tank. So on one of the last videos of doing one of these systems, someone said to me which way do you, pl which, which plug do you take out first? And I was like, it doesn't really matter. I don't think it does, but let me know in the comments. Does it matter which, Bungie remove out first. Let's open this valve up now. That's a good sign. And this side. Let's give this spoiler a demand.
There we go. Well, the old girl is alight. Hopefully, don't have any airlocks now because that is a uh, that is a big problem with gravity-fed systems. Didn't let that much water out, so I'm hoping not. It's starting to get warm now. It's going to take a little bit of time for the old girl to um, get things up to temp, but give me a pressurized system any day. Just the pump thrives when there's when it's under pressure. Just a miles better style style system. Um, and I haven't worked on gravity fed systems for about ages. I mean, I've done two in the last week, two TRVs on gravity. I've got another one to do on Wednesday. And before that, I bet I've not worked on one for nearly two years. Thank God. They're a bit of a thing of the past. They just, uh, I've just, <laughs> I get nervous. <laughs> So you just have to believe me on this one that this is bouncing with heat. And so are all the others. One of them was stuck, another TRV head was stuck. I managed to free that off, but they're all of a certain age now where they're ready for change and the system's ready for an upgrade. But I'll just put a plaster on it like we've done now and uh, carry on and go on to the next one. Right, this next one's a bit of a strange one. Um, this is a empty, flat I suppose and whenever the landlord has used the kitchen sink for cleaning it pours out well hmm I'd say is that's why I reckon that once upon a time that would have been for the washing machine hmm now they are just normally a little plastic cap like this yeah plastic which will sit inside to blank it off but I'm sure I will not have one of them in the van. So let's see what we can do. So I undid the cap off that. That's what you'd washing machine and normally go into to see if it'd tighten onto there, but it doesn't. It's not the same size. This, I don't know what size hole that is, but it's not a strain away style like that. So I definitely won't have a new one of them in the van. So my plan is, if this will go into there, which it looks like it will, I've got new strainers in the van without overflow connections. There's no overflow on this sink. I think I'll just swap that out and leave that cap on there. And if they need a washing machine adapter, they have to uh, either swap the trap or find something to attach that. I'll leave this in case they need that. So, got ourselves a Viva overflowless waste. Just gonna clean all this up and get that dropped in. Silicone, silicone, yes, I silicone. Don't know why I said I don't know what size that was. It's just an inch and a half waste, but with a plug, no chain. <laughs> However, obviously there was no plug for this. There is now a plug for that, but if that plug was left in, and this plug was obviously plugged in, and someone left the tap running, and you have no overflow then. So at the minute, if you left that plug in and left the tap on, it would just overflow back into this sink and drain away. So I'm gonna have to uh, take that with me, especially this with this being a rental. Right, that's that in. Let's give this a whirl. End up swashing, sw swashing, swapping from the gray Nut to the white one just because obviously it looks aesthetically better. That was only going to go in the bin anyway. Yeah, new waste, no overflow. And then when they want the washing machine, they'll just have to um, get an adapter from that. Or they could potentially use something along these lines. But we'll see. 
we'll see. Could just swap this trap. That is a McAlpine trap with a washing machine and machine adapter on. Loads of movement on the pipe, you can swap it. I might be back putting one in. But as for now, the leak is stopped and that's what the landlord wanted. So if I'd had a cap on the van, ideally you'd just to put a cap in that side and that'd have been it, job done. But it's not a common thing. The only time you'd ever have one of them in the van is if you've took it off a job or just somehow inherited it. So look at it both ways. I could have gone and picked up a cap from Plumbers Merchants, which is 10, 15 minutes away from here. And then obviously 10, 15 minutes back, there's half an hour gone there. I don't know, you might have paid a pound if you could buy the little caps for one of them. The overflow kit, strain away, so there the beaver one is about six quid. And I had them in the van and I've done it within the hour. So it swings and roundabouts sometimes Replacing something a bit more extreme, like I said, the, the, the full waste, strainer waste, as opposed to just going and getting a cap, the cost would have now been the same, because I'd, I'd just been here longer, labour labor costs, if that makes sense. So yeah, let me know in the comments, what would you have done? Don't just put in the comments, I'd have had a cap in the van and I'd just put that on, or something along them lines. This scenario, you've no cap, merchants is 15 minutes away, you've got a strain of waste, and do, do what I've done. What would you have done? Let me know in the comments. So yeah, back here again, because I rung the landlord and said, yeah, I've sorted out the, uh, the leak issue, swap the strain of waste. However, you might find it difficult to, well, the tenant might find it difficult to connect a washing machine on it, because they obviously they previously used the overflow part. And he said, well, what can we do about that? I said, we just need to swap the trap for one with a washing machine adapter on. Something like that. That's what I had in the van. That's what's getting used. Didn't really need to be adjustable, but it'll work. So yeah, we're here to swap that back again. So because this is an adjustable trap, if I undid that and up there, you could slide it down. Obviously, I don't want to slide it down. I want it all the way up. But as you can see, it still needs a little bit cutting off it because we've got this little extra piece in now which is no problem. Just disconnect that 40 mil. We call pine oh, compression coupling and shorten that pipe. Should go straight back into that old elbow. I did that the lazy way. <laughs> right, new one in now. Now I've got to put these in. Now there's two ways of doing this. Obviously you've got an open end there, so it needs the bung. You can either put it in, bring the bung inside, like so, and then you're not on. However, <laughs> the way I prefer to do it is take the bung out and put it on top like that because you can clearly see that that pipe is capped off, whereas that one you can't tell. So if they put the washing machine into that, turned it on, used it, well, it can't drain away, can it? Because it's got a cap in, but that's why I prefer to do it that way. But there is two ways of doing it. That's it, I'll just give it a clean up because now it doesn't look like a brand new trap. And uh, give it a test. <laughs> 